Hello everyone, I'm Becky Goldsmith from Piece of Cake and I want to give you some updated information on the pins that I would recommend for hand applique. This is the Bowen half inch sequin pin. It is the shortest. This is the Clover three quarter inch pin with the little white head that many of you are familiar with. And this is the one inch long shorter perfect pin by Karen K. Buckley. Each of these are good in their own place. I personally don't use the clover pin so much, but I know it might appeal to some of you. So let me show you the differences between them. Um, it may be that you need to have all of these in your toolkit for different times. Besides their length, the biggest difference between these pins is that these are more rigid and the Karen K. Buckley um, Shorter Perfect pin is very fine and very flexible. And that affects how the pins work. I have already positioned this leaf on my background. Now, I don't want to move it out of position, so I'm not going to pick this up. I have to pin flat against my sandpaper board. When I'm using the very shortest pin, the half inch sequin pin, what I do is put my finger in front of where I want the pin to be and I point the pin down and through both layers of, of fabric. Then I can shift my grip and lift up with the pin and push it through the fabric. Whoops! I'm doing this at a funny angle so it's hard to hold on to. All right, just like that. And if you're wondering why I put my pin there, watch the video about how you pin outer points. All right, the pin, the clover pin with the white head is longer and it is admittedly easier to pick up. Um, but I would use it the same way. I would put my finger in front of where I want the pin to be. I would push it through the fabric and through. Because these pins are thicker and more rigid, you can pick up the end of the pin. You know, I'm shifting my grip, I'm pulling up on the end of the pin and making a hill to push the fabric through. These two pins um, are very nice pins. The shorter pin has less pin hanging out to catch your thread. That's one reason why I like it. I'm also able to get more pins around a, um, a shape that's more curved or when I need to change direction with the pins, having a shorter pin allows me to do that. Longer pins very often hang your thread up more. Now, here's the other thing though. Because this white head is smooth, when your thread hangs up on it, it's easier to get it off of that head than it is to get it off of the pin head that's got a, a T, a more traditional T top to it. These actually slide around a little more between your fingertips when you're doing the pinning. I don't like that part, but I like the part where you can get the thread off easier. These are easier to push forward because the T is easier to grip, but they are shorter, so some of you are going to have more trouble with that short pin. Now this last pin, I like this pin a lot and I find myself using it more and more. The thing is, you've got to plan your pin placement because um, the pin is longer. And when you put your pin in the fabric, you can't as easily pull up with it to push the pin through because it is so flexible. What I find myself doing is getting the pin into the fabric and then I move my fingers forward until I can push it through. And then because it is so long, I usually get into the fabric twice. So I like this. You know, I don't like the fact that it's longer um, because it would be nice if I could bend it right here and have a pin here and a pin here um, instead. What I would really do is probably back this up 
and split the difference. Now I want my pins to be parallel to the line I'm going to sew and a quarter of an inch away from it. And here, this is a little farther than a quarter of an inch, but if I'm going to use these pins, that's the cost of doing business. The upside to these, the, the, these flexible, perfect pins, they're a little harder to get into your fabric, but once you get them in, because they are so fine, they lay flatter in your fabric, where the other two pins pull up a little more. The other thing is that the head on the perfect pin is so small that even if your thread hangs up on it, it's really easy to get off. So, each three of these pins has pluses and minuses. What I have found is that I like to have all three on hand and I pick and choose among them depending on how I want to use them. I hope you have found this tutorial to be interesting and helpful and I hope you have many more happy stitches. Thank you for watching.